there's a funny scene in Notting Hill where the main character he realizes that he's uh, made a really bad mistake. He was he's given up the opportunity of going out with a movie star, and uh, and yeah, he realizes it, and uh, he just, oh bollocks. <laughs> I've been thinking about that lately uh, with everything that's been going on in crowdfunding and comics gate and independent comics and everything. And what I'm talking about is like the economics of crowdfunding back in the day, like uh, when I started talking about these things like a couple of years ago, uh, I used to say it's inevitable. It's just going to happen. People are going to see what's going on over here in crowdfunding. It doesn't have to be necessarily comics gate, but you want to take comics gate as an example. Uh, like, look at what's happened with Ethan. Look at what, what's happened with John Malin. And now look at what's happened with Shane Davis. I thought, look, all these pros that, are, I mean, maybe they're making an okay living. Maybe. I don't know. Some of them are. I know a lot of them aren't. Uh, we know that because they're running GoFundMes to uh, pay for their rent and sandwiches <laughs> and their cat food. Uh, but um I thought, surely a lot of them will think, why am I slaving away on someone else's intellectual property that I own nothing of and I can get kicked off at any moment when I can just uh, follow the money? Look at what's happening over there. Surely my wallet will demand that I follow. Uh, now, two years later, that hasn't, despite the success stories, that really hasn't taken place i want to show you guys something these are the most successful uh comic books on kickstarter of all time let's scroll down here and just take a quick look at them girl genius volume 12 reprint uh, i'm not sure what that is oh, it's an independent independent comic book series uh what's this check please that was a web comic Lady Death, another independent comic. I'm not sure what this come on comics is. Look at these numbers, though. We're talking like half a million. Uh, we're talking, yeah, big, big numbers of backers. Ava's Demon, web comic, Tomorrow Girl. What's that? Is that a web comic or an indie comic? I mean, either way, I don't think it's a. This is, uh, yeah, not sure what this one is. Control Alt Delete Box Set, another web comic. Okay, we got the Power Rangers in there. Fair enough. And uh, Order of the Stick reprint. Again, another webcomic. And uh, Berserker. I'm not seeing, like, I don't know, Jim Lee's, uh, I don't know, Muscle Man or Rob Liefeld's Pouch Puncher. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's check out Indiegogo. Ethan just shared these, um, shared this today. So this is the top 10 chart. Now uh, Shane uh, Davis has, has entered the fray. We got to Ethan at the top. Ethan has two campaigns over a million dollars raised. Well, at least two books over a million dollars raised. There's uh, Earthworm Jim, Doug Tenample, 800,000. This Icarus guy, he's not CG, but uh, He's not, I don't think he's, he's definitely not a mainstream professional. I think he came from Instagram. Uh, another Ethan one. We've got your boy, Zach. Uh, there's John Malin in there. 386. Wow. That's huge. Blade Devil, RGE. There it is. Uh, Shane Davis in Glorious Rex comic book. 300,000. Under that is Cecil, a YouTuber. 284,000. Where are all these mainstream pros? They sh they they surely know about this. Where are they? Are they not? Do they hate money? What is it? Why are they so hesitant? Is it an is it because it's un it's an unknown space? They're they're married to the stable yet uh, diminishing paycheck. We know what, especially the guys at Marvel. We know how they uh, how they deal with royalties for any character that you've worked on. Uh, we were talking about this actually on either on Shane's channel or Ethan's yesterday. And I didn't think this was brought up, but you know, I think a lot of these guys might actually be embarrassed. Uh, sorry. They might not want to be embarrassed by people that they've spent the last nearly going on five years, uh, demonizing. I think that's a big thing. Like they are worried that they're the big names, you know, on their side of the fence. 
Um, but uh, if they come over here, are they going to make this list? Are they going to make this list? Uh, some of them might. Some of them might get on the low level. Unless they've got a big name movie star attached to it, though, probably not. So they've, uh, you know, they spent the last, uh, all these years uh, calling Comics Gate a hate group. But they've also, they've also even demonized sort of crowdfunding in general, talked down to this whole thing, to this whole endeavor. You know, it's not, uh, it's not real comics. There's that narrative that's going out there that's saying uh, none of this is about comics. It's about washed up pros selling outrage on YouTube. That's the that's the kind of narrative of why any of this exists in the first place. So does that play a role in why they're not coming over and throwing their hat in the ring? Uh, I can't find them anymore. I wish I could, but I've read many, many of them that say, like literally say, Shane Davis is a washed up pro who's no longer in comic books. I've read that on Twitter. Actually, let me share this, uh, something that I had, like, I didn't find, I didn't find tweets about Shane, but this is like, this is the sentiment. Now. This is the comment I got on a recent video. Uh, a guy who's not a fan of comic skate, but, um, I shared with him cgnow.net and, uh, he came back with none of these books from comic skate have been successful outside your bubble. I don't know why you're bragging. If any of them were any good, they'd be selling in the actual indie comics scene. The actual indie comics scene. Uh, this, apparently, all this, not actual indie comics. This, either. I mean, I mean, it's it's slightly different. It's sort of on the other side, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars raised, thousands and thousands of backers. Also, not the uh, actual indie comic book scene. I would have to presume. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Is it conventions? Is it, uh, I don't know, getting write-ups on comic book, what is it, comicbooknews.com or something? I don't know what even those sites are. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get into arguments with these guys and they just uh, go, they go nowhere. Um, but, uh, but you know, for the first time this year that I can remember, CG creators are actually going to conventions. They've got booths set up. They're being successful. I see them streaming about it and everything. It's starting slowly. I mean, obviously, there was a, a big pandemic. I don't think people even did conventions for a couple of years. But uh, it's starting to slow up. Uh, it's starting to speed up. Sorry. We're also expanding onto Kickstarter. A lot of uh, comic skaters are now using that uh, crowdfunding platform. They're using their own websites starting to now. And the audience on YouTube is growing. It's growing real fast, actually, which is great to see. So it will be amusing. <laughs> it will be amusing to see what new excuses our haters come up with next uh, to tell us why whatever we're doing is not real comics now speaking of real comics quote unquote as they see it uh shane davis you know he's he was a dc artist he worked he drew batman he drew robin justice league wonder woman superman uh, metal men whole bunch of people over the course of his career uh, but in 2020 he jumped what he saw as a sinking ship struck out on his own and uh, launched his very first crowdfunded campaign here. He came in and started hanging out with us in Comicsgate. He started building his own YouTube channel. I think it's about to get up to 7,000 backers now. He does uh, subscribers now. He does uh, daily videos. And really trying to expand his reach, expand his audience, and uh, expand Comicsgate and, and get more eyeballs on what he's doing. Yeah, it's no easy feat to get. 1700 backers to fork out nearly a hundred and thirty thousand dollars to support you on your first campaign and anyone who watched this whole thing take place know how sort of transformative it was for shane uh for that to happen he followed up a year later with inglorious rex which is uh, arguably a, a book with a lot of broader appeal he's he mentioned it yesterday it's sort of like it's got all the 
sex appeal of a superhero comic book, but it's actually a kaiju uh, fighting book, which I think was a really cool take on it. You can you can you know you can use all these uh, cool effects and all these uh, cool costumes and everything. And uh, what an excellent decision it was to go with Inglorious Rex here because he just closed out this yesterday to the tune of three hundred and three thousand dollars and three thousand three hundred and ten backers which is mind-blowing uh especially on a second book uh so <laughs> yeah look at these numbers look at them mainstream naysayers this is what they call washed up this is what they call not in comic books anymore <laughs> trust me these fans are real and this money too is real uh with this money shane was able to buy a house he is able to start a new family and in my opinion do i say this i mean i don't want to speak for shane but uh looking at this art and knowing that he owns 100 percent of these two popular ips uh, it's probably safe to say i mean i don't want to speak for him it's probably safe to say that shane davis is at the new peak of his career and the trajectory is pointed upwards so yeah <laughs> naysayers shut up <laughs> um look they ha why do they hate this they hate this because they're not in control of it it's not their it's not their system they they can't do anything about it and it's not as if the creators who get into crowdfunding unnecessarily in control of it either it's the fans it's the fans who make this happen and that's the that's the whole key to it and i think that's a big reason why uh, a lot of these guys don't want to join us because they don't really have a big supportive fan base when you take away the characters that they're drawing and working on uh, that's just the reality of the situation uh, and, you know, these numbers, on the other hand, in crowdfunding and especially in Comicsgate, uh, not every time, but most of the time when a book is popular, these numbers go up over time from uh, book to book as opposed to down, which is the normal trajectory of, a, of uh, you know, normal comic books sold through the direct market. But, uh, you know, in this space to succeed, you've got to actually give fans something that they want. <laughs> and we've seen you know with the success of guys like ripper uh we've been talking a lot about a rising tide and now we get to add happily add shane davis into the mix there of these uh big time players in the space not many people are out there raising three hundred thousand dollars on a single book but uh, we always have to remember a uh, high tide as awesome as it, as it is, is worth nothing if we don't have the boats capable of uh, traversing these, these crazy seas. <laughs> so uh, let's all keep building and growing together. We're figuring this thing out. We're figuring out how to do it properly, how to do it better. No one's going to do it for us. We have to do that ourselves, uh, especially not those who chose willingly to stay on the shore and laugh at us as we sailed off into the sunset. <laughs> How's that for an analogy? The guys, that's it for the video. Congratulations to Shane. You are awesome, man. I can't wait to get in glorious Rex. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Do consider becoming a member and sign up for Painter Death. I'll see you guys soon. All right.